Hello, <coughs> dear friends, this is Joel Humphreys. I'm glad to be with you and share with you another word from the Bible. About a 10 minute message here that I want to share with you on the fact that we need to recognize in our lives as we seek the will and the way of the Lord, we need to see some truths. And that is that real freedom is found in Christ Jesus. Real freedom is found in Christ. <coughs> We need to see that. The freedom to overcome sin. The freedom to call on God. The freedom to believe in Jesus. The freedom to have power to forgive. Oh, praise the Lord. We need freedom to worship God. Freedom from the old flesh. Uh, that freedom is in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, number one, you're very important to God. You mean a great deal to the Lord, whoever you are. <clears throat> I want you to know that Matthew 10... We read these words in, uh, and, um, in verse 29 and 30. Now, now there are two sparrows are sold for just a penny. And one of, but one of them shall not fall to the ground without the knowledge of your Father. Isn't that amazing? God sees and knows one little bird that falls out of the millions and millions of birds in the air. Now, he goes on to say... <coughs> But, very, but the very hairs of your head are numbered. That's how important you are to the Lord. Now he notices the little sparrow that falls, but it says, Fear not, for you are of far more value than many sparrows. You are so much more important than the little birds, and yet God loves them, and He so much loves you. That He loves you so much that He's, he's counted the number of hairs on your head. And it's important that we know these truths and believe in God and know that He's there to help us and know that He'll show us the way we need to go. And that way is the way of God, the way of peace and power and freedom. Freedom over in the book of Hebrews in the 11th chapter, it says this in verse 27, By faith Moses, and when he forsook Egypt, did not fear the king, for he endured as seeing God who is invisible. And so Moses uh, left Egypt, and he didn't fear the Pharaoh when he left, <coughs> because he 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 uh, endured as seeing him who is invisible. He saw the invisible God. Now that sounds like a paradox. He saw the invisible. How can we see that which is invisible? We see it by faith. He didn't see the outline of God. He didn't see the body or the appearance of God in the eye and the flesh, but he saw him by faith. He believed in him and knew that he was there. And that's the way we live today, dear friend. We must believe in God when we cannot see him. We must believe he's there when we do not know his appearances, what it looks like. We must believe he's close to you and he's God, numbering the hairs of your head and cares for you. And he wants to bless you and help you today to get through another day for the glory of God. And that's important. We need to see it and know it and realize it. We read over in the book of, uh, of uh, uh, let's see here, what, what verse we're in. It's in the, uh, in, in the book of first, uh, Second Corinthians in the fourth chapter. It says, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. You see, the problem is that too many times we look at what we can see, and what we can see is usually something that's going to cause us some problems and undue worries. We do not look at things which are seen, but which are not seen, because the things which are seen are temporary. They don't last long. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So we must learn to look to God. We must look to Him for guidance and direction. And that will help us to guide others. To guide others. They tell me in a place called Gateway, uh, Ireland, uh, St. Nicholas Church there has a great tall, tall tower. And that tower in that church is so tall that ships coming into the Gateway Bay are guided by that tower to come in to harbor. And so it is with you, dear friend. You are God's tower shining out there in life for somebody to guide their life into the harbor of God. We have an influence for God. You have an influence, and you need to recognize. Open your heart to others. 
I read not long ago uh, by a group of, of uh, people that were meeting on the ski slopes of Colorado, out there where they ski. And they'd meet there at a certain time or once a week and they'd have prayer and a Bible study. A young lady said she learned something. She said, in my heart I had felt a distance from my friends and even from my family. I didn't feel close to them. But she said, I learned through the Bible study and prayer that I opened my heart and drew closer to my family and to my friends. And I may be talking to someone that has the same problem. You're not close enough to your family. You're not near enough to them. You do not confide in them as you should. You do not trust them and love them like you should. Let Jesus come into your heart. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. Let the love of God be in you and you will learn to care for them and open your heart to them and to your friends, to your friends that you may not be close to. And that's important. Over in Romans 3rd chapter verse 24 says we have been justified freely by His grace. Freely we have freedom by the grace of God through Christ Jesus. Salvation is free. You cannot earn it. You cannot buy it. It is free. It's a gift of God. For by grace, the Bible says, we are saved. And that not of ourselves, it's a gift of God. Amen. And so you need to trust Jesus. And if you've never trusted Him, pray a brief prayer like this. And just say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He paid for all my sins. I believe He rose again. I believe He's coming back. Come into my heart. Help me live for You as the Lord of my life. Amen. Pray a prayer like that, dear friend, and live forever. Find your good church and attend and worship with God's people. And learn to live and know that we are free. The freedom we find in Christ Jesus. He sets us free. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Oh, I thank God for that. I thank God for that old song, Once and for all, once and for all. Now, oh God. Oh, praise the Lord for that. Oh, praise God. Oh, now we are free. No condemnation. Jesus has bled. And, and there is salvation. Cursed by the law and bruised by the fall. Christ has redeemed us once for all. Once and for all, O oh sinner, receive it. Once and for all, O oh friend, believe it. Oh, cling to the cross, the burden will fall. Christ has redeemed us once for all. Now we are free, no condemnation. Jesus provides a perfect salvation. Come unto me, oh, hear his sweet call. Christ has redeemed us once for all. Praise God. Let him redeem you without money and without price. Simply give your heart to him as best you can. And you that love him and you that serve him, walk in that freedom. You will never be condemned. You belong to God and you're on your way home. Praise the Lord God. Bless His holy name. He saves us, and He keeps us once and for all. Amen and amen.